Legislative Finance Division has calculated this amount uh, and tells us that it is approximately $2,108 per person. Um, I, I'm okay with it. They left off, you know, the pennies that, uh, that might change there. The amount is what was gained from, uh, and to respond to the previous speaker, from the dividends that were withheld in 2016 and 2017 and 2018 and 2019 and 2020. And that is a substantial number. And the markets, of course, have been doing relatively well over that period of time, which is how we get to $2,108 per person in interest. What, what we're saying is, if that money had been distributed, this is the amount of difference that we now have in our state treasury because we withheld that money. And in recognition of the difficult last year that we have experienced, uh, that all Alaskans have experienced, it is appropriate at this time that we distribute the money that the state has gained on interest from with those withheld dividends. Uh, we're not asking in this amendment to actually distribute the withheld dividends. We're simply saying that it is appropriate at this time to send Alaskans the interest the state would gain by not distributing their PFDs to them. Thank you. Thank you. What'd you say briefly? Representative Rasmussen. Um, I'm just citing section 123 paragraph one and want to remind the previous speaker not to indulge or impugn motives of other members. Thank you. Thank you. Re Representative McCabe. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I believe when you uh, cite that Mason's manual, you're required to say what the exact words were that uh, impugned the other member. That as well, if you need it. Brief it is. Oh my God. Okay, are we ready for the question? Question is, shall amendment 71 to House Bill 69 finance pass the House? Members may proceed to vote. Will the clerk please lock the roll? Does any member wish to change his or her vote? Will the clerk please announce the roll? 18 yeas, 22 nays. With 18 yeas and 22 nays, amendment number 61 has failed to pass the House. Madam Clerk. Amendment number 18 by Representative Eastman, beginning page 106, following line 16. Representative Eastman. I thank you, Madam Speaker. I move amendment number 18. There's been an objection. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, and I'm glad to, to bring this amendment before the body. What this does is it adds contingency language to our budget. It makes it clear that we will not appropriate money to the legislature uh, until and unless the Capitol building is open to the public as it has been before. And the date that we are to open it by is no later than the 121st day of session, which is May 19th. 2021. So again, the appropriations that we are going to be making to ourselves in the legislative branch are contingent upon reopening of the Capitol building to the public, whom it belongs. Thank you. Is there further debate? Representative Hannon. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in opposition to this amendment and can tell you as the representative representing the Capitol building, it is nothing dearer to my heart than to restore the public access to this building. But I am going to remind the members that I wear a second hat, which is chair of the Legislative Council, which under our uh, uniform rules is a joint committee of both bodies, 14 members, that determine procedures and govern functions outside of the session and the floor for the building. Um, if you have not noted in the last couple of weeks, it has been efforts to reopen as broadly as we can with a council that governs of 14 people policies. So 
building policies and access have changed, LIOs have opened. Here on the floor, the speaker is allowing us to speak without masks up. Um, and I think it sort of the worst kind of production of political theater to tie a budget to an item that we could match, meet the contingency by convening in 1159 on May 19th and open the building and therefore meet the contingency without meeting the intent, which is to safely reopen this building as quickly as we can to the public and to the members of the legislature. Uh, the governance of us, our budget is pretty streamlined. The date that's chosen is this fiscal year. The budget we're working on is next fiscal year. I would urge you to not produce political theater, but produce an operating budget that allows the legislature to continue its work. And the Legislative Council will continue to work towards opening the budget building safely. Thank you. Representative Prox, speak to your objection. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. It seems that um, the intention of the maker of the motion is being impugned by accusing him of political theater. Brief it is. So he's doing a point of order. Will the House please come back to order? Representative Prox, that would be a point of order, not an objection. Is there a further debate? Representative Kirka. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in support of this amendment. Um, we were just reminded a moment ago that the Legislative Council Committee has the authority uh, delegated to it by the legislature in the rules to govern, and, and I believe the intent of the rules is to govern the uh, facilities and, and whatnot uh, during the interim, but that is now applied to the session. But I'd like to point out that we are the appropriators elected by, as a legislature, elected by our, our constituents and policymakers. And one of the ways we make policy is through how we appropriate and the contingencies with how we appropriate. And the, the budget is full of those. And I would also like to point out that, and maybe this point should have come first, the Legislative Council committee has not met, has declined to meet on the policy topic of COVID response and when to open the building and when to, to roll down, uh, uh, roll back the restrictions during this legislature. And I think that the an appropriate response to this amendment for us to, as a body, to speak to this and to uh, direct policy in that way. Representative Tilton. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I find it somewhat ironic that Alaskans ca Alaska's capital is not open to Alaskans. So I appreciate this amendment because I for one do believe that the capital that is for Alaskans is open to Alaskans. I understand that there has been concern and that things are different because of the um, COVID um, protocols that were put in place by a previous legislature. And that those protocols have not been addressed by the entire legislative council. I appreciate that there is a working group of the legislative council that consists of five members that are working to open the Capitol, but the Legislative Council as a whole has not met, and Alaskans' Capitol should be open to Alaskans. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Representative Vance. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I appreciate the fact that we have a, a legislative council that can make decisions for a, 
for this body on, de on determining when it's safe and appropriate to open the Capitol. But the rumor has it is that we are more than 70% immunized in this building. I don't know. There's HIPAA laws. We know that. But somebody knows because there's been a voluntary um, response by people who have said that they've been vaccinated. But with the recent um, changes in testing policy, it's going to be real clear who's testing and who's not, who's vaccinated and who's not. It's a roundabout way of finding out exactly who's been vaccinated. So I'm going to assume that we are more than 70% vaccinated because in fact, all of Alaska is more than 40% vaccinated. So my question is, when will it be safe to open the Capitol to the public? If people, if the public can go across the street to get tested to make sure that they are not carrying COVID into the Capitol building, when is it ever going to be safe to open up again? This language is a contingency that says, we mean it. We mean that we are truly accessible to the people of Alaska. We don't wanna, we don't wanna pass a budget of their money behind closed doors. We've been ha we experienced a, a, a major internet outage just a couple days ago, yesterday. I don't know what day it is. That was a direct cut from the connection that people have to what the work that we're doing in this building. The issue of opening the Capitol is highly important to the people of Alaska. We need to take it seriously. We need to open the Capitol. And so I support this amendment. Representative Shaw. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This amendment is almost, it's very appropriate for this body, considering that the community as a whole is almost in lockdown. And I'm speaking of Juno directly. If you come into this building, you have to come into this building tested. You have to come into this building with a negative test. That means that 99.9%, .9%, if not 100% of this building is safe. I spend a lot of time on the streets and trails of this town. As I move around this town, I see individuals in their electric cars with their windows rolled up by themselves with a mask on. I'm on the trails. People will get off the trails if I don't have a mask on. But yet, if I go to Anchorage, I can travel the trails. I went into Lowe's I'm willing to say a quarter of the individuals in that store did not have masks on. I would hate to say that we are so bothered by moving. We, we move the goalposts. We're so bothered by, I don't want to say the fear of where we are at the present time. We had reason to be fearful 60 days, 90 days ago. But today, when I walk into this Capitol, I have to show a card. I have to let them know that I have been previous, previously tested I have, or I've had my shots. It's starting to wear on our souls. And I, I truly think that if Ledge Council would meet, we might have a definition of where we should be, not where we could be. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Is there further debate? We will take a brief at ease. Will the House please come back to order? Is there a further debate on amendment number 18? Seeing none, oh, Representative McKay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As you know, I'm a freshman. I'm still learning some of the rules here. I'm reading this book, handbook on Alaska state government. If I may read one sentence. Representative McKay. Permission to read. The legislative council is a permanent interim committee of the legislature 
and is responsible for conducting the business of the legislature when it is not in session. And if I could read from the cost, this book, Alaska's Constitution, Legislative Council meets between legislative sessions. The council does not play a role in policy development. And it is in charge of accounting, property management, data processing, public information, teleconferencing, printing, bill drafting, research, and maintaining a reference library. I don't see anything in here about the health and security of the Capitol building. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I fear that we do ourselves a disservice when we allow a policy like this to endure now for more than a year. And I think we subconsciously allow ourselves to believe that this building is for us. It's for our work, maybe for our recreation. That is not the way that this capital was designed to operate. And, and it is very disappointing that we have departed from what was intended. I remember when I was first elected talking about the people's business and the people's building. I haven't heard that talked about in quite some time. I, I can't think of any reason why we would end this regular session, now the second regular session in a row, without allowing the people access to this building. Over the course of the last year, uh, I think I've seen pretty much everyone in the building at one time or another, whether that's legislators or staffers or relatives of legislators or lobbyists. I, I, I don't begrudge anyone coming into our Capitol building. I realize that there are, are, are needs for legislators to meet with lobbyists. I realize that it's very appropriate for legislators to have family members come to the building. I hope to have my children come to the building next week. I don't begrudge anyone that access, but it should not come at a time when we are forbidding the public from accessing the building, which in all rights should be theirs. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Are you ready for the question? The question is, shall am amendment number 18 to House Bill 69 pass the House? Members may proceed to vote. Will the clerk please lock the roll. Does any member wish to change his or her vote? Will the clerk please announce the roll? 21 yeas, 19 nays. With 21 yeas and 19 nays, amendment number 18 has passed the house. <laughs> 